computer. All right. I believe it is now. Can y'all still see my screen? Yep, Jeff, I think you're good to go. And it's showing that it's recording on our end. Excellent, excellent. All right. Well, welcome all to the annual meeting of the Spatial Ecology and Telemetry Working Group. Uh, we, we have this meeting once a year. We hold it at the annual conference like we're doing now. This is definitely the first time we've tried it in this format. Um, right now, uh, y'all can mute or unmute yourself as you wish. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really expecting anything weird to happen, but you know, if, if, if something gets some kind of feedback or something, I might uh, mute you. But please, if you have any questions or want to say anything while I'm talking, just holler right out. I, that, that works best for me. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like right now we have 19 people attending. Uh, just a quick, uh, quick tell me how many of you, if you are a member of the working group, could you type a little note into the chat room? in the little chat. I'm, I want to get a sense of how many people are actually members. Okay. I'm seeing. And, and the reason I'm asking is because if, if we want to vote on anything, we need at least 20 members here. And there's something I do want to vote on. So it'd be really nice if we had a quorum. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Okay, Rebecca, you're going to be a one on November. I think that'll count. Uh, but right now it looks like uh, I'm only counting uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plus me, I'm one, so it'll be nine. So. We may not be able to have a, a, a vote on anything. Uh, Jason, did you have something to say? Well, you know, I see more and more people coming in. So as we get to that point, I'll ask again, maybe we'll have reached the, uh, the quorum level. All right, then let's, let's start off with the meeting. First off, I want to introduce myself um, and the other executive uh, members, the officers of this working group. <clears throat> right now, I'm the only one here, I believe. Uh, Alex Wolf will be joining us when, when he finishes what he's doing right now, and, and hopefully James can make it. But anyway, my name is Jeff Janess. I'm the chair of the working group. Um, I am a, a wildlife biologist, a spatial ecologist, work in several places. I work at the Museum of Northern Arizona in, Northern, in, uh, in Flagstaff. I am also a professor of GIS at the School of Forestry at Northern Arizona University. And then I have my own business where I, I do analysis and write tools for people. Um, for those of you who, uh, who are on my email list, I also sent you this agenda and uh, it, it has some info in, in, the, in the back. It has some the bios of all of us. So I'm just gonna scoot down to that. And also if you're not a member I posted links to download this in the chat room. So it's up at the very top of the chat list. So anyway, moving on. Um, our treasurer, Kathy Zeller, she's a spatial ecologist. Uh, you, you can read her bio here. She's, she's been doing a lot of stuff uh, in, in Massachusetts. Uh, I feel awkward just reading her bio. So. Uh, you know, take a look at, at, at this last page and you'll see. We have a new secretary coming on, Alec Mendoza. She also works at the Museum of Northern Arizona here in Flagstaff. She's a springs biologist, just getting started in the Wildlife Society and in this working group. And um, we, you know, we wanted to have some real elections uh, and we've been soliciting nominations for the past several months, but you know, it's been kind of a weird year, I think. Everybody's got other things that they're dealing with right now. And right now we only have three candidates for the three offices. And that's me for chair, 
Kathy for treasurer and Alec for secretary. Um, Alex Wolf, our current secretary, is retiring, so he's 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 he, he needs to move on to other things. And so, at this point, I don't really see a point to hold a vote for this. <clears throat> um, and we only have one candidate for each office, so you know, what do you think? Anybody have a strong opinion on this? That they'd like to shout out. I'm thinking just uh, let's just call these officers. Uh, we'll just declare them as the officer without having a formal vote. What do you think? You know, actually, it looks like we're up to 28 people. That might be enough for a quorum, and that could make it. Uh, make, make it legitimate, I think. Uh, oh, congratulations by acclamation from Robert. Yeah, that's where I'm kind of leaning. Um, I don't see a point to a vote. Uh, how about if anybody is opposed to this, uh, please speak up or write a message in the chat. And if I don't hear anything in a few minutes, I'll, I will declare uh, the officers as elected. Okay. All right, well then this sounds fine. Um, I would like to tell Alex in particular, Alex Wolf retiring as our secretary, thank you so much for all the time that you put in. Uh, Alex has been working with us for as an officer for the last two years, he's been volunteering for various tasks for the last five. So he's really given us a lot of time and work and I, I really do appreciate his, his help. Okay, then moving on, <clears throat> future elections. In our charter, we, we actually wanted to have the secretary and treasurer alternate uh, elections. So we'd have one one year and then they'd serve a two year term. Then the other one would be elected on alternating years. <clears throat> the idea would be we'd have some sort of continuity in the executive board here. And we never actually did that. So pretty much we've had our elections for everybody eat when, when we do the elections. So we figure since this time around, there's nobody but one person running for each. We've decided to uh, make the current role of, of a treasurer only last one year, and then we'll have another election for them in 2021. And then, the, then from there on, they will serve a two-year term and there will be alternating uh, elections. So that's the plan. Um, I also want to have a chair elect position uh, and maybe that's part of the reason why nobody wants to run for chair. Nobody is quite confident to just take over the, the helm of it without you know, spending some time. So in 2021, we're going to start holding elections for chair elect, and then that person will just assume the role of chair in 2022. Okay, any thoughts on that? Oh, thank you for putting those in the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything else? That guitar? Sure, just. Uh, Devin, I think, yeah. All right, uh, any, any other thoughts? Okay, thanks, Drake. Next up, current membership. We have 246 members as of the, the uh, Excel file I just downloaded yesterday. So pretty strong membership uh, from from well distributed over the US and Canada. And we have, we have a few folks from England, Ireland, Australia. So this is pretty fun. Um, our current balance in the bank is $6,500, as you see there. There'll probably be a little bit more after this, uh, after this conference when, when, when our uh, workshop on Google Earth Engine is done. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, we do want to discuss at, at some point during this meeting, what do we want to do with this money? So have this in mind. I want to describe some of the things we've been doing over the past year. We got a pretty nice news, newsletter out in the spring. Uh, we should have emailed it to everybody. 
Uh, this is what it looks like. You can also download it from our uh, web page at the, at the TWS site at this link. So uh, if you're interested, make sure you download or get a copy of these agenda, this agenda, and you can have the link right in there. But in there, we had some nice articles from the folks who had, uh, who, who we gave travel grants out to last year. They, they all wrote some, some pretty cool and sophisticated articles for our newsletter. Uh, we got some on general movement ecology. Uh, the Sarah Bassing wrote one on the effects of sampling method on understanding habitat associations. Riley Jensen et al. wrote one on mod modeling carnivore interactions and uh, Dana Corellis. And Dana, if I, if I mispronounce your name, sorry, uh, you, uh, you can correct me there. Uh, and Patricia Moody Harvison wrote one on movement ecology and the space use of mountain lions in wild west Texas. So they're all here in our newsletter. I recommend you take a look. It, it, there, there's some pretty neat things there. Okay. Um, at this conference, we're, we're active in a... Uh, oh, Alex just stepped in. Cool. Uh-oh. Nine. Okay. Um, oh, this is good to know. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, Alex has a private message to me. Uh, Alex, uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay, we, we, we're, we're, we're having a, 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 a contest for our special poster session. So I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in just a sec. So one of the things that we are doing right now is we're sponsoring this Google Earth Engine workshop that's coming up tomorrow. This is organized by our treasurer, Kathy Zeller and Michael Evans of the Defenders of Wildlife. And Michael Evans is going to be presenting it. Uh, they're putting on two workshops, one kind of an introduction and one an advanced one. So yeah, we hope you all are able, able to make those. They, they sound like they're really useful things. I mean, Google Earth Engine is becoming such a powerful thing these, these days, uh, really used quite a bit. So this is, this is good information and really appreciate uh, Michael putting this on. Uh, next, we're having a special poster session on uh, GIS and wildlife ecology. We have quite a few interesting posters. I hope you all were able to make that. Uh, we, uh, Let's see. Yeah, that it's it's going to be open for the rest of the conference. So please stop in if you would uh, like to see that. Um, now uh, we we have a. Uh, uh, I'm going to send uh, at request Alex right now uh, in a private message. Could you send me the tallies for the the votes that you got? And I have a few more. Oh, uh, Jamie, Jamie, you don't see the agenda posted here. Can you post it in the discussion after the meeting? Sure thing. I've also posted a link to it at the top of the chat window. So uh, I will post that again here. Just let me grab that. Okay, Jamie, I'm posting it into the chat again. Okay, and Robin is trying to find the poster session. Okay, so um, the poster session, if you go to your virtual window here, go to sessions, go to browse, then you have to type in uh, GIS in, yeah, GIS and wildlife ecology. Here we go. We have all of these nice posters and there are some good posters here. I, I, I liked all of them. I learned a lot from each. Okay, and the thing about this is we, we wanted to, to also give the people who made these posters a little opportunity to get a little extra recognition. So we're having this voting session to uh, just see which ones are the most popular. And we, we've got some books that were donated that we would like to award to these people. 
And right now, nobody knows who the, the winners are. <laughs> Alex uh, has been tallying the, the online voting. The voting is closed now, but he's tallying the online voting and he's gonna send it to me. And I've got some other votes to add into that. And uh, as soon as I hear from, from Alex, then, or Alex, then we'll, we'll, we'll have the final uh, award winners out of that. So thank you all, all, all the people who contributed posters to that. I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed doing it. Now, um, we do have a, a general question for the group. Uh, was this worth doing? Was this something that we should try again for next year? Hmm. Uh, go ahead and write a little note there or, or just speak out loud to me. I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy hearing your thoughts on this. Uh, Jeff, I, I think it is worthwhile. This is Rob Kissel. Okay, good. Yeah, it, it, it was, it's a neat idea, isn't it? I mean, neat uh, topic. The, let, let's target the, the cool new spatial analyses that are coming along and, and show how they can be used. I, I think this is, I, I thought it was fun. Jeff, this yeah. is Mark Nelson. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, so I wanted to make a comment because I was a co-author on one of the posters. That was okay, made. sure. Uh, ours was actually on uh, brook trout. And this yeah. isn't a, a fisheries conference, but this uh, special session actually encouraged us to submit something so we could focus on the geospatial things of mapping riparian areas and so on. So yeah, I, I thought that was a, a, a neat idea since okay. many of us in the wildlife field I get into GIS and remote sensing things because of our interest in home range size and habitat use and movement and all these things. So I, I like it. <laughs> okay, cool. I like to hear that. Thank you. This is good. Okay, and Carrie, she's voting to keep it. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, and... Uh, Let's see. Okay, Alex just sent me some 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 votes. Um, Drake says it's a good thing. Uh, it helps us focus in on the stuff. Oh, I like this. Uh, I'm seeing lots of positive things. Okay. Now, um, okay, maybe, I'm thinking maybe this is a good time to uh, 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 for me to tally this up. Um, Caroline, I was going to introduce, I was going to introduce a, a guest here. Uh, uh, we, we have Caroline Murphy, and she's a TWS government relations manager. Uh, she's, she's made a video for, um, uh, for, uh, uh, for the TWS as a whole. And, and, and Caroline, if you happen to be available to discuss this for just a sec, uh, then I could tally up these votes while you describe it and then I could come back after you're done. What do you think? Yeah, sure. That sounds good. All right. So hi, everybody. My name's Caroline Murphy. I am the government relations manager at the Wildlife Society. Uh, I'm just here sitting in on this meeting. Uh, the video that Jeff is referencing, we had sent it around to all working groups. It is also posted on the conference site under on-demand sessions, if you want to take a look at it there, if that's easier. But it just provides an overview of the current state of things as far as items that we interact with on policy. Uh, so the items, that, the items that Jeff has listed in there uh, pretty much cover it. Recovering America's Wildlife Act, the status of that legislation, uh, regulations impacting implementation of the Endangered Species Act, where those regulatory rules are, uh, National Environmental Policy Act, Migratory Bird Treaty Act. So, uh, oop, uh, uh, yeah, Caroline, uh, I think, okay, go ahead. Looks like you're back. Oh, did I cut out for a second? Just a second there, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Sorry, my internet connection has been <laughs> kind of spotty all day. Um, 
So yeah, the, the video is uh, relatively heavy on regulatory rulemaking. There has been a significant amount of that uh, by this point in the year with the end of... Mm. Well, it's yeah, definitely a spotty connection there. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> can you guys hear me now? Yeah, can hear you now. Okay. Um, anyway, just in case I get cut off again, that is the video. Uh, I would be happy to answer any questions on it if you guys have had a chance to look at it, or I'd be happy to field any questions that any of you guys have on the federal regulatory. Well. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll turn my video off. Okay. Yeah, thank you for doing that, Carol, Caroline. Uh, yeah. Is, is there any questions for Caroline? Okay, well, thank you for doing that. I sure do appreciate it. Um, this this video that, that is in the link here, uh, this is to download, so it's a, about a 300 meg file. Uh, so um, we're, we're hoping that we can get that posted where you can actually watch it online instead of downloading the whole thing. But in the meantime, uh, you can download it from that site. Okay. And Jeff, just really quickly, I don't know if I had cut out during <laughs> this, I may have. Uh, it is also available in the on-demand section of the TWS conference website. Um, as Jeff said, we're looking to get it in a YouTube video format as well. But if you're looking to pull it up uh, online, you can grab it from there as well. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, okay, good. Uh, then let's 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 step back to the the poster sections. I, I would like to let the folks know who got the most votes. Okay, it looks like the top vote getter was uh, Sean Tudor in uh, exploring connectivity between habitat patches to identify conservation priority, priority areas. Let's see. Okay, so Sean, congratulations. Um, then we have, let's see. Okay, next up is Paige Vandiverst et al. The Reconstructing Landscapes of Ungulate pred Predation. Where is this? There we go, up at the top. Here we go. Yeah, that was pretty cool too. I really like what you're doing with uh, with with these these envelopes here. That was pretty neat. Okay. Uh, then it looks like we have assessing watershed condition and brook trout. Oh, yeah, so congratulations on that. Yeah, Mark, I'm glad you're here for that. And then Thank you. we, yeah. Okay, then we have, then we have a tie. Looks like a three-way tie between uh, uh, integration of GIS, GPS, remote sensing. Rob, um, Rob, Robert, do you go by Rob or Robert? I go by Rob. Rob, okay. Well, Mazel Tov, you're on a, a tie on, on, on this one. Uh, let me, there we go. All right, so we, we have that. And we have uh, remote sensing and wildlife management using object-based image analysis. Yeah, that object-based analysis, this is a big thing in remote sensing, isn't it? And I, I really like seeing that. Uh, here we go. Yeah, they, they, there's some cool things happening. And then uh, Alexia Goodman, your remote habitat suitability analysis for the mitigation of gopher tortoise and solar development conflict. Okay. All right. So you know, votes for everybody, but these are the, these are the top ones. So looks like that makes one, two, first, second, and then we have 
three three-way tie. So that gives us five people. Congra yeah, congratulations to all of you. Um, let's see. So, so I, I'd like to award these in, in order. Um, uh, Sean, are you with us? I am, and thanks a lot. The encouragement is definitely appreciated these days. <laughs> well, cool. Do you see one of these that you would prefer? Oh, of the of the posters. Oh no, of the uh, we're we're going to give you a book. You oh can, oh. Yeah, you can pick one of these. Oh, let's go with How to Live by Maps. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah, okay. people always talk about that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Paige, are you here or Seth, Timothy, Edmund, any of the authors? Okay, not hearing them. So we'll, we'll save them for later. Um, uh, Patrick Landish, Lisa Elliott, William, Mark. Oh, Mark, you're here. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, do you see one that you'd like? <laughs> We have two of the how to lie with maps. Um, let me see the. And do you have the? Okay. I'm not quite hearing you, Mark. The, the visual display of right? Okay, we'll go. For, we'll go with that. Visual display. All right. By the way, if nobody has seen this book, it's really cool. Edward Tufte has some neat ways to describe and, and, and graph quantitative data. And uh, I just wanted to show you, this is one example out of that book. Here he's mapping Napoleon's march to Moscow and back where he symbolizes the path, the width of the line by how many troops Napoleon had. So he started with 422,000 went to Moscow, got less and less and less, and then he had 10,000 when he got back. And then you map it against the temperature. So you can kind of get a sense of the misery of that expedition. So Tufty has, has neat things in this book. So we have you down for that. Thank you very much. Sure thing. Uh, okay, uh, Rob, Rob uh, do you have a preference on one of the remainders? Um, yeah, and I want to thank you so much. I mean, it was a great opportunity, and I certainly enjoyed it. Oh, uh, cool. How about the introduction to the mathematical techniques? Okay, got you down for that. I like that one. Okay. Uh, I'm just writing it down in my notes here so I make sure everybody gets the right one. Okay. Um, Ben Martini and Doug Miller. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yep, sure can. Yeah, I'm here. Thanks again, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, uh, cool. It was great to see all the neat projects and to be able to participate and kind of broaden the outreach of uh, GIS and the wildlife field. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know. I think I'd like to lie with maps as well. <laughs> all right. I, it's a good one. <laughs> all right. Thank you again. Sure. Okay, and then Alexia, are you with us? She doesn't sound like it. All right, then we'll, we'll I will distribute the others uh, accordingly. And yeah, thank you all so much. I really appreciate that. I enjoyed it. I, I thought the posters were really cool and I'm, I'm glad we're gonna try it again next time. Okay. Oh, Sean says he saw that uh, thing in Esri's Cartar, that uh, Napoleon thing. Yeah, that's, that's a neat one. All right, so let, let's uh, review again what we're, what we're doing at this conference. We, we didn't uh, sponsor this particular symposium, but we are sort of a supporter on it. The way it works is that one or two uh, working groups will propose symposia or workshops or various things, and they try to get uh, support from other working groups. And if enough working groups write in letters of support, then, then the TWS will, 
we'll go ahead and host that type of thing at the next conference. So we were supporting the long-term data sets for biodiversity monitoring, research and management. And that was organized by the Biological Diversity Working Group. And if anybody was able to look in on that, it was pretty cool. That's the, the, the presentations at symposium were only up for Monday and Tuesday though. So they're, they're switched out for other symposia for the rest of the week. They'll probably become available sometime after the conference is over when you know, generally most of the conference stuff becomes available. So we, we can't see that anymore for the rest of the conference, but it will be available later. All right, uh, next up, we have an awards program through spatial ecology and telemetry. And it, it, it's, it's just our way, I, here I have a little announcement of it here in the, in our newsletter. It is a, oh, where'd it go? I must've skipped right over it. Here we go. It, it, we, we like to find various people out there who are producing uh, new ideas, new algorithms, new manuscripts, new software. These people write these tools, come up with ideas that really help all of us in the field. And uh, our working group just likes to find a few of those each year and say thank you to them. And just, it's a group of, of professionals who use their tools and have been helped by those tools. And it, it's just our way of, of saying that we are grateful for what they've done. So we don't have any money for this. You know, we're not, we're not a wealthy working group that can do that, but we make a nice certificate and we write a letter of thank you. And, and uh, several of them have been very grateful for that and have even advertised that they have been recipients of this on their website. Some examples in the, pa in the past, this aid habitat, never been sure how to pronounce that. Home range tools, I uh, uh, think Art Rogers is actually here today and he's one of the authors of that. Circuitscape, frag stats, all of these have been past recipients. So we got one solicitation or one nomination, excuse me, this year uh, for Christian Fleming and Justin Calabrese's continuous time movement modeling R package. And you can see it right here at this link. And it looks pretty cool. Uh, and I, 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 I'm more than happy to award our, our award to them. I would like to get a vote on it though. And I would like to know if we have a quorum yet. Right now we have 32 people attending. Uh, we need 20 people for a quorum, 20 members of the working group. So how about in the chat room, why don't you just type, uh, type yes if you are a member and we'll see if we get up to 20. Okay. <laughs> yes, in favor, Alex. Thank you. And I guess we only need 19 because I'm a, a yes as well. Uh, darn, looks like we only have 13. Plus me would be 14. So it uh, looks like the everybody else is, is guests and that's that's terrific. It just means we can't have an official vote. All right, so what we'll do then is we'll, we'll do a, a, a survey monkey or a, a Google Forms vote for this later. Um, so, so just be aware that, that we're gonna do this at some point. I, um, I can't imagine anybody would vote against it. This looks like a really cool thing. Uh, these folks have, have created something really useful and I am glad to, oh, uh, Robert says that you've used to, to calculate home ranges for boreal car caribou. It is great. Okay, this is even better. Thank you for that. Um, one of the things about the award is that it actually is voted on by the, by the working group. So we will do that officially uh, soon. Cool, all right. And Dana's also used this, all right.
Okay, this is this is looking really good. Okay, then let's move back to our agenda. So I would say the odds are really good we're going to award this. Um, we'll we'll put out a, a notice to the working group when we're ready to hold the vote and. Uh, all of you who are visiting, I sure enjoy you, uh, encourage you to join the working group. It's five bucks a year. We'll try and make it worth your while. Okay, next item on the agenda, our social media presence. Um, we had a, a message earlier from Joseph Drake. He sent it to me. I'm not sure if, if he's still here. He, had, he, he was gonna have to leave, but he's proposing that, uh, that we actually have a, an office or maybe a board position to be the be responsible for social media for Setwig, the Spatial Ecology Working Group. Right now, our treasurer, Kathy Zeller, has been spent a lot of time on this. Uh, Jessica, did you have something you'd like to say? So you, you got your microphone open, so this would be cool. Well, if anybody has something to say, please just holler it out. Our new secretary, Alex Men or Alec Mendoza, is also excited about the social media, and I think she will help out on this. I know nothing at all about social media, so I'm, I'm, I'm not good for this one. Uh, Jason says you're, you can help out. This is good. This is good. I think what we would like then is if you could contact us, uh, Jason, and anybody who who would be willing to, to help out on this. Drake, yeah. If you're willing to help, uh, could you please send, um, send me an email? Um, my email is, let me type it in here. Uh, I'm going to type it into the chat. Okay, send me an, an email um, of Sean. Okay, you're, do you think it'd be great? Instagram has been useful for you This and other ecologies. Okay. Yeah, uh, we need people who understand this stuff. Oh, I, I just sent my email to Arlene privately. I apologize for that. I'm gonna send it out to the group. So any of you who, who would be willing to help us on this, uh, please email me. I will, uh, I will get everybody organized. Alan was wondering if we have a Facebook page. Alex, do you know? <laughs> yeah, we, um, we have had a Facebook page. I believe we haven't really been active with it, um, but I think it's still standing. Uh, it would be great to have somebody who's uh, willing to take that over. Um, and actually run it as an admin, uh, as Kathy has been doing for our Twitter account. And it'd be great if somebody wants to, to helm an Instagram account or anything else. Um, and for everybody else, uh, it would be great, you know, to have a continual supply of content. So, you know, once we get folks who are actually running these accounts, maybe, you know, if other things, if you just find something that you think is interesting in the realm of spatial ecology or telemetry, you know, send it to to whoever has has control over the accounts and we can sort of share it with members that way. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you, Alex. Okay, yeah, so it sounds like we've got some interest and some ability out there. So this is good. Uh, as I said, please contact me and, and we'll get you all organized and, and uh, I, we will be so grateful, appreciate it. Okay, so next up, ideas for next year. So this this is really where I'd like to hear from you guys. What should we be doing? Now, normally we have, uh, most of what we do actually kind of centers around the national conference every year. We, we have uh, uh, symposia or workshops. We often, usually we host, we, uh, what am I, the uh, travel grants. We usually uh, fund travel grants for a few people. 
The thing is, this is usually about the national conference and you know, we'll keep doing that, but can we be doing more? Is, is there a way that we can help people who can't make the conference? You know, this is kind of a select group, I think. Many thousands of people are members of the Wildlife Society, but only a fraction gets to make the conference. So what do you think? What, what could we be doing uh, for say local organizations, uh, maybe state level groups? Um, what do you think? Hi, this is Alex again. Um, yeah. I just chime in. Um, that's something that we had, had talked about amongst the officers is, uh, as Jeff mentioned, doing some travel granting for either regional wildlife conferences or state level wildlife conferences. Um, and I know when I was a grad student, I was much more able to get to the regional and state level conferences than I was the national conference. Um, but of course, it's a trade off. Uh, national conference, I think, is much more expensive. And the more we support people going to local meetings, you know, that that does sort of detract from the number of folks that we can send to the national conference. So just just a bit of a trade off there to think about. True. Yeah. And there's a whole lot more people going to the uh, state level and regional and you know, we don't have a huge budget. So that's also something to consider. But yeah, I think that I think that we would be good. Jeff, it's uh, Art Rogers here. Yeah, um, Art. I'm wondering if, if um, you know, and, and now that everybody's getting used to this virtual reality world, <laughs> Um, I wonder if, if some of the, um, the workshops, you know, this year's or, or even from past years, um, you might be offered uh, by, by the working group, um, uh -huh. you know, and whether or not, you know, it, you could offer it to, to members only or for some nominal fee. Um, but it seems to me that, you know, with all of the, the current technologies and whatnot, that it's feasible to offer a... Uh, a workshop of some sort, you know, during the year, not just at the time of the annual conference. Wonder what folks might think of that. It makes a lot of sense to me, especially when these workshops are working as uh, as online events. Yeah, and it could be a, an additional way to raise funds to support travel to these regional uh, meetings or or to the uh, the annual conference. Ah, uh, sure. So I just did a quick check of the TWS, uh, the web page for the working group, and I wasn't able to find a single link to uh, the Facebook page or a Twitter, any kind of social media. So that would be something I would recommend if you want to get involved on social media is getting a link on that website. Okay. Web then, page. Um, then, then, then I agree totally. So... Uh, uh, Robin yeah. Abernathy here. I am. Um, I'm actually joining you from far northern Canada. Oh, welcome. Um, <laughs> and I just wanted to share one of the silver linings for from COVID is actually all of these virtual conferences and workshops and training opportunities that have sprung up because where we are is prohibitively expensive to travel. Mm. Um, but it's just opened up so many opportunities and and i it's not the same as in-person conferences for sure but right. i think perhaps the working group could sort of facilitate throughout the year different symposiums or working group meetings where perhaps we have a, a virtual presentation on some work somebody's doing and we could just all sort of keep the virtual uh networking going together um so when covid eventually does end hopefully soon yeah we can take the silver lining with us um that would be awesome just my thoughts well i like that and, and another part about that i like is that we could get the whole working group involved and one downside of this thing we're doing right now is that it's only conference attendees right we couldn't mm -hmm. we couldn't bring everybody in but what you're talking about would allow us to have a working group wide meeting for anybody who wanted to attend. No, I and like it, that a lot. And it broadens the scope of the working group beyond just around the conference. I think it would it keep it more active. I mean, I would anticipate some 
by six months from now, many people forget about this working group and what should we be doing, but right. if there's activity all throughout the year. I think it stays on people's radar more. Okay, this is this is a real good idea. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mark Nelson. Yeah, yeah Mark. Nelson. Oh, Mark, Mark, you're kind of fading out there. and I'm not okay. quite. Can you hear me now? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Sorry, I have a bad mic on my laptop. <laughs> uh, I'll get my mouth very close to the keyboard here. <laughs> so I'm also a member of the Biological Diversity Working Group. Okay. And we're starting to host a seminar, a webinar series. So that's a way to highlight, people can highlight their work uh, and then share it with other people as a way to get to know each other and to make connections. Yeah, this is a good idea. We've, we've, we've discussed this before and, every, and it, it's universally a, uh, approved of. Everybody likes it. So we need to actually get in gear on that, I think. Uh, we need, maybe we should get some folks uh uh, some volunteers in the working group to help us organize that and, and solicit webinars. You know, everybody's recording things right now. So it could be that it'll be easier to do webinars than it used to be. Uh, Alex, I see you got a comment. You like the idea of virtual workshops and a monthly or maybe a quarterly. Yeah, that might be more manageable symposium or even just a monthly networking session. And this idea of the webinars, yes, I would like to pursue this. Um, Jeff, I have a thought too. Uh, yeah, Drake, go ahead. Um, I was just thinking, kind of piggybacking off of the, you know, getting, take, keeping with the silver linings from everyone being home and on Zoom is even when we do have uh, our annual conference meetings, maybe finding a way for members who can't make it to be able to zoom in and at least somewhat participate in the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, because that way, at least we get more input from the rest of the working group if they maybe can't make it. Um, it's just okay. a thought I had. Okay. I'm, this, this is good. I'm getting a real sense of direction on this. So, okay. Yeah, Jeff, um, yeah. this thing, I, I, and I, I don't disagree with that idea. I think it's a great idea if we could um, Zoom people in who can't be there. But mm -hmm. I just might mention that um, having having been a Canadian section representative on TW, TWS Council and having some idea of, of conference planning and costs, uh -huh. that um, in order to do that, um, there would likely be a cost associated with um, uh, with acquiring lines or whatever mm. from the convention center to make them available to folks. And so, um, although you can make that kind of recommendation to council and stuff, my guess is they, they might come back and say, well, have you got any money to support that? So <laughs> I just put that out there. I don't know if Carolyn might want to comment or not on that being involved at headquarters, but um, I, I, you know, it, it, it's astounding the sorts of things they charge you at these convention centers. And you may recall, Jeff, too, we put on a live demo uh, 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 poster session one time, you know, and, and they wanted something like $100 per electrical outlet. Oh, gosh. Of, you know? Um, so anyway, I, okay. I think it's a great idea, but we'll see if it, if, it, if, it's, uh, if it could be done. I'm not sure. I see. That's, that is legit. Uh, Carolyn, did you want to pitch in on that? Yeah, I, I'll just say that I, I do think that's a very good flag. Uh, those costs of in-person in conference and the associated capabilities that come with even just having a projector at a meeting, they, they add up very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, who I will say, though, given that we have had to completely change the formatting of our conference this year, who knows what next year's conference will look like. Mm -hmm. And I am, I am not intimately involved in those discussions, but I imagine that given the success of this year and that people have been so willing to engage that members have been so willing to engage that uh, these sorts of discussions have started to happen at the council level. Uh, but I do agree with Art's suggestion that if this is something the working group would be interested in, uh, it would be a good flag for council. Okay. Yeah, I would be, I'd be 
I'm kind of expecting that future conferences will, even once we get back to in-person, that they're going to offer an online uh, alternative just because so many people do come to the online who couldn't make the in-person and presumably there'd be a lower cost for that, but we'll see. So, all right. Well, I think, I think those are good points. Thank you, Art and Caroline, I appreciate that. It is a, a good idea. We will uh, look into it. We will see if that is possible and if it is out of our range. Um, now, odds are a lot of these, these conference events will be available uh, after the conference uh, anyway, Caroline, do you, do you know if, if those, if these things will be available to the, uh, all, all the entire wildlife society or just conference attendees? Yeah, so I'm not just following up on the conversation yeah. we had before right. uh, this meeting started. I'm not exactly sure what the layout will be to general membership mm -hmm. uh, in previous conferences when they have been all in person, we have recorded, uh, we've recorded talks in kind of a webinar format. So overlaying people's voices with their slides, mm. but all of the online resources that have been recorded in this virtual setting, uh, I'm not sure how we're going to roll that out or if we're gonna roll that out more broadly to the membership post-conference yeah. for folks that didn't attend. Yeah, there's probably needs to be decided yet. So that It'll, it'll be good to hear. Okay. Well, then looking at our agenda, um, I, I really like these ideas of, of webinars, of, of symposia that, uh, that we can do amongst our working group. The technology is there. It's pretty cheap and we get a lot of people recording things. Um, Let's see. I'm looking at the chat right now. Arlene pointed out that we could record the webinars and workshops and develop a resource library. Oh, yeah. And, and Rebecca has an idea for plenary presentation of the awards program recipients. Yeah. Demo these things. Okay. We are in a weird time right now learning lots of new ways to do things. Okay. Um, so we, you know, we're, we're, how should we be spending our money? Yeah, um, this is all kind of wrapped into what we've been discussing. Uh, we're we're going to do the special poster session, or at least we're going to propose it next year. It's been popular, so I, I, I expect that uh, the council will think favorably for it. Um, how about general uh, other general ideas for symposia and workshops for the conference? Uh, actually, uh, uh, Art Rogers and I were discussing uh, yesterday a couple of ideas. Uh, you know, machine learning is becoming such a big thing in, in pretty much any type of analyses these days. Uh, this might be something that we can host something on. Uh, there, there's there's got to be a lot of wildlife applications going on with that. There's also a drone working group that just got started and uh, Art pointed out we kind of missed the boat on that that we could uh, we, 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 we're we're very drone oriented in our group as well. but we can work with them for some ideas. there's there's a lot of drone mapping things happening these days that, that we should be working with. Um, what do you think? Uh, what, does anybody have a, a, a really hot idea that's kind of been bubbling in your head for a, a you know, spatial related symposia or workshop for next, next conference? Any thoughts? Art, are you still there? You had some some good ideas yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I wanted to let others have a have a shot at it first. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, 
So, so the sort of thing that uh, yeah, Jeff and I were talking about during the student professional mixer the other night when we didn't have any students in the room. Uh, anyway, it, so I, I let's put it roll it all together. So what I was thinking of is is some sort of symposium that brings together um, the use of drones to do lidar imaging that is then interpreted by machine learning. How's that for rolling it all together? Um, and I don't know if there's folks that'd be interested in that, or or maybe just one of those things, like the use, uh, current uses and applications of lidar, which is is becoming more and more available. Um, uh, but again, you know whether that uh, could be combined with these other things, and 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 where machine learning fits in. I mean, there's a lot of that going on, of course, with um, uh, with camera traps and and that sort of thing. Um, and and it. I think there's some links again with some of the other groups in, in biometrics and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there might be some support from those groups as well. But I just curious if, if something like that um, uh, would be of interest to folks. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm not necessarily volunteering to lead the thing. <laughs> uh, not because, well, these aren't really my areas of expertise, particularly. Um, I, 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 come to learn a lot more in the last few months as an associate editor with the bulletin where we've had a bunch of papers submitted on this stuff um, over the last six months. Um, so I, I kind of know that there's some interest out there. I'd certainly be willing to help folks put together the proposal. Um, I have done symposia proposal before that have been successful and I was the, the, the chair of the symposium committee when we um, hosted the annual conference in, in Winnipeg a few years back. So I kind of know how to how to put a successful uh, proposal together. So I'm willing to help out, but um, oh. it'd be great if those who know more about it would, would be willing to kind of take the lead. You know, we have to do things like identify speakers. So who are the movers right. and speakers in those fields? I don't know them all. I've, I've seen the reference lists in these papers. So I have some idea of some of the names, but you know, who'd be interested. Okay, yeah, I think if we had a decent uh, proposal written up and we so sent it out to our group, I, be I bet we could find some folks who would be willing to, to do the present the talks on it. Yeah, so we have a lot of ideas here in the chat as well. Uh, so is, is there anybody in at this meeting right now who has a little time, who feels that they are uh, pretty competent in machine learning in general. Because, you know, I've, I've read the papers, but I don't feel like I'm a real expert at that at all. But, uh, Art, if you're if you are willing to to help us put together that proposal, well, I guess I'd be I'd be willing, you know, if, if uh, with some help here, um, to try and identify, you know, the sort of who the who the important people are here um, in that okay. field that we might be able to uh, to get involved in a, in a symposium. I mean, uh, one of the important things, and I think you might have said this somewhere else along the way, Jeff, is is to get these these proposals. Um, you want to have your speakers or proposed speakers ironed out by by uh, by December. Um, I believe the usual call for proposals for these things happens around February, I think. Um, you know, so you want to have have your speakers lined up and and more or less agreeable to um, to coming and presenting if possible. Um, to when you submit that proposal. Um, Proposals that just say, well, we're going to find people to talk about this, that, and the other thing. Those proposals are not usually very successful. Right. We need to have it planned out. You really do. And some sort of commitment. So, um, and again, if you want to pick a topic area in particular, you know, um, again, I'm willing to help out with somebody who, who might know more about it that, uh, in, in finding people. Okay, well, I could uh, send out a message to the working group and maybe I can also contact biometrics because I bet uh, I bet there's a lot of people in there who are into this. And uh, we could look for some people 
uh, willing to, to co-sponsor this with us. Uh, this seems like something that could be done with biometrics uh, very reasonably. And so we, we can draw on their experience as well. Mm -hmm. So I will do that in, in within the next week. I will contact them. And I will also send, a, send out a message to our working group uh, looking for experts who can help us put this symposia together. We will then uh, quickly seek out people who could present the papers and we should and we can get that done by December, I think. Art is is it end of December or early December we should be shooting for? Well, I'd say early December because nothing gets done on time and before you know it it's Christmas break. So true. Yeah. <laughs> early December. Okay, Richard Gunzel has some ideas. Uh, Ryan Nielsen of, of West Inc. Yeah. Okay. And and I'm copying out all these messages in the chat too, so I'll have a record of it. Okay. Then this is a sort of a general machine learning. Should we be trying to bring in drones as well on this? I mean. I think we could do a, a whole separate thing on drones. There, there's so much you can do with drones. Uh, just, you know, machine learning could help us classify the, the habitat from the images, but there's also uh, defining the, the shape of the landscape from drones. That's kind of cool these days. That's sort of a separate field, not really machine learning. Um, yeah, topographic analysis. What do you think? Should we try and, and do a, a single symposium that includes drones and machine learning, or can we do a separate one, or should we do anything with drones at all? It seems, seems to me, this is Alex here, it seems to me like the machine learning has a lot of different applications. Um, so depending on whether we're doing, you know, a larger symposium or workshop or what, you know, some perhaps, you know, it might be useful to have some basics of machine learning and then some applied uh, case studies that are really specific to wildlife and spatial ecology. So, mm. you know, a drone case study, a case study with, you know, LIDAR or um, OBIA or, you know, right. some of the other suggestions that have been thrown out there for applications. But uh, it seems like drones could also be their own own subjects, um, you know, from flying and, and flight path planning to post-processing, which could involve machine learning, but, you know, doesn't necessarily, I think. Uh, so both pretty broad topics. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. And Jacqueline says that drones are topical and a potentially potential for industry sponsorship. Hmm. I, I don't know how to do sponsorship. Uh, this, but it looks like this has a, in the chat. It looks like there's a lot of interest in this. Okay. Okay. So Jeff, there's some questions here about you know uh, consulting, if you like, with the drones working group. Now, when we were in that uh, thing the other night. You checked out for a few minutes to check into the drone working group uh, room. Um, were you able to, to, to get any traction there or talk to anybody about it? Well, we talked for a few minutes and they seemed to like the idea of working with us on something. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think there's some potential there to, to jointly sponsor something. We didn't really get too far into specific ideas. They they had some students coming in that you know that they needed to take the they needed to talk to the students that it wasn't there for me. But I think yeah I think there is some potential there and and uh, I think it's worth pursuing. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's ideas of machine learning, ideas on drones. So we're going to you know, think more on that. We'll be in contact with the working group to, with our 
ideas and, and get more input if we if we're stuck on something. Are, are there other ideas? I saw some ideas in here for, uh, uh, let's see. I think people were typing ideas and we were just moving so fast. There was, Jeff, there was one a while back about migration corridors, uh, stopover yeah. habitat and Brownian bridge models. That sounds like a cool topic to me. Yeah, yeah. This Brownian bridge stuff, we've been looking into that. We, I think we even gave one of our awards to a Brownian bridge tool one time. Um, Richard, would, would you be willing to, to write up a, a paragraph or two on that that we could send out to the group? Sure, I could do that. We have uh, out here in Wyoming, we have the Wyoming Migration Initiative and um, they did the Migration Atlas uh, that received the Wildlife Society Award cool. I think la last year. But um, their work is getting implemented into policy. Um, uh, they set up some migration corridor local working groups uh, uh, dealing with the public and various interests uh, just getting started on that. And so um, they have direct application and they also have the, the technology so I could uh, put something together uh, about that. Okay, uh, I appreciate it because I think there's some potential here but I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to let people think on it and, and have something to review and, and not, not just expect everybody to have an answer right off. So I, I like the idea. So thank you. Um, and, and Heather, uh, idea to enter into the mix, remote sensing and wildlife ecology. Yeah, especially given the reliance on NDVI and LIDAR. Yeah, uh, boy, it's an integral part of identifying habitat, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah, and that, that there, there's there, there's so much there. The object-based uh, research that we have in in, in one of our posters, um, object-based image analysis, and and Alex pointed that as well. It could be tied into the machine learning and that is reasonable there there is a, a whole field of remote sensing that's not not quite into machine learning um well then heather would you be willing to write up a quick paragraph that like like uh like richard we could send out to the group Okay, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, am I missing any ideas? I was just going to mention too, Jeff, there was a, um, I don't know if other people caught it, but there was also the, the presentation. Uh, it's a contributed paper by uh, Tristan Nunez et al. on uh, predicting migration corridors using maximum likelihood models. Oh, okay. Uh, movement data which in a sense, they were fitting the models to Browning and Bridge uh, home range data and no such. Kidding. Um, it was part of the biometrics and modeling one session. If folks might want to have a look at that, that are interested. Okay, uh, who was the author on that again? Nunez, N-U-N-E-Z. Okay. I can probably copy and paste this stuff. Oh, please, please do. Yeah, thank you. The chat, Let's see if I can. Okay. Jeff? Yeah. This is Mark Nelson with my mouth by the keyboard again. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to uh, point out that there are, uh, I'm more familiar with federal agencies since that's where I work in the USDA Forest Service. And in our agency, we have a geospatial technology and application center, formerly known as the Remote Sensing application center and mm -hmm. they have just seems like every week they have some kind of a training session going on uh just either describing in uh, quite detail over maybe a couple of days down to just an introduction to a topic like uh, the last one i saw was intro 
introduction to uh, using 3D NAEP uh, for determining structural characteristics. 3D um, so NAEP. So there are a bunch of those things already being presented. And huh. some of what we might do is just link to existing opportunities that people are already doing. Similarly, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service has this uh, National Conservation Training Center in West Virginia. Uh, I imagine that they probably have some uh, mapping wildlife habitat kinds of uh, courses in there or workshops, and some of which might be accessible uh, to us. And then uh, a third example would be uh, folks like the people at the Tuxent Wildlife Research Center are doing the work with the Breeding Bird Survey. Uh, are doing all kinds of analysis and things um, with uh, from regional analyses all the way down to individual stops on a route. So it's kind of scaling up and down. Uh, there might be a way to plug into some of the things they're doing. So looking from the perspective of, oh, here's a nationwide data set. How do we use it? And mm -hmm. question. Okay, I know these are good ideas, and especially if we can provide links to existing and successful programs. Do do you know if the if the the Forest Service one you mentioned and the wildlife are these available to the general public or just uh, in the agency? Uh, I don't know about the National Conservation Training Center, but I I do know that for the Forest Service, I just saw the announcement the other day for one, and it said if you're a Forest Service employee, click here. If you're not, send an email to these folks and then they'll uh, give you the link so you can okay. participate. And, and many of those are with no cost or no charge. Okay. So I'll send you, I'll send a link, should I send it to you or to the group with just a connection to the listing of all of these kind of trainings and workshops that are, are going on year round. Yeah, um, if you send it a link to me, I'll get it out to the officers. And then okay. this sounds like something that'd be perfect for our our, our, our various websites, Twitter feeds, and uh, uh, apparently we're our Facebook page. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. You know, th this is the type of service that we can provide our, our users. We can let them know about things that are, are working and are available to them. Okay. Um, it looks like we're, we're kind of getting toward the end here. Um, any other ideas on symposia workshops that you want to discuss? Art, thank you for putting that link in there. This is cool. All right, yeah. All right, then uh, let, let's go on to our last item, our newsletter. We, we, we try to get this out roughly once a year. Uh, so does anybody have a, a, a quick idea? Uh, usually we, we ask the people we award travel grants to to write us some articles. And that's how we've got some of our really cool ones. Otherwise, you know, it's kind of tough to get people to submit newsletter items. Seems like everybody has something else they need to be doing and, and they do. It's just not a lot of time these days. So what we usually do is send out messages to the group and just ask them to submit something that they're interested in, write up something and we'll publish it. And, and we'll keep doing that. But uh, do you guys have any ideas for a better way to get articles? Uh, anything else to do with the newsletter? Alex, did you have something? Yeah, I'm um, kind of thinking out loud here and uh -huh. I'm just sort of wondering if we were able to get our social media accounts more active, what's the relationship between having those versus the newsletter? In other words, um, you know, if we had a more active newsletter, would we have uh, a lot of readership or are, mm -hmm. are members on, on the call here more inclined to be accessing social media accounts on a more regular, but, you know, less involved basis? Oh, good question. 
social media versus newsletter. And of course, they're not mutually exclusive. I think the, the newsletter articles are, are nice, sort of more in-depth features, and you can actually include, uh, you know, full-size maps in there too, uh, which is nice for this group. Yeah, that was going to be kind of my input on the newsletter versus social media was that the newsletter, you can obviously have a little bit more, uh, whether it's a longer article or whatever about it, but social media could be a good way to kind of push even whether it's working group members or whatever, just like even little blurbs to like promote what we're doing in spatial ecology and telemetry working group or just in spatial ecology and telemetry in general. Yeah, we need to definitely uh, expand on our social media. Yeah, this is good. And the newsletter, newsletter, I think, is useful. I think it, it's sort of a, a, a record that's saved, you know. Social media is sort of ephemeral, I think, but the newsletter is, is available to, you know, to refer back to in the future. That's a great point, Jeff. Yeah. Um, Arlene had an idea. She sent it to me privately. I'm not sure if you meant it to send it to the group, but the idea that maybe new technology companies would be interested in sending information on new products for the newsletter. I think that's reasonable. Um, it's always the idea of selling advertising, but I, I, I don't know much about that. Not my skill set there. But uh, people would be interested in the new technology things that are coming out too. I, I was always sort of waiting for news on a, on a GPS collar that would fit on, a, on, a, on an owl. I don't even know if they've ever come out with one yet. That's, I think that's a great idea. Um, I know Esri is very much plugged into the Society for Conservation GIS, which is oh, a sure. great group, but um, you know has some overlap with us. But also, we have our own, you know, own specialties with regard to telemetry and those sorts of things. So, if we had um, Esri drone companies, telemetry companies, um, maybe if if they wanted to start contributing to the newsletter, that might generate some more activity with it. Yeah, it's an idea. Hmm. Okay. And you can connect the social media stuff to the newsletter um, with the, the stories that you have from the previous award winners. Um, you could have them give like a short YouTube video of or Facebook <laughs> video of what they did. And, you know, you can have the link to the newsletter in all of those videos. But it's true. Not, you don't have to not use one if you use the other. I think they should yeah. make uh, an excerpt from the Twitter feed at the end of the um, newsletter to say, and this is some of the stuff that's come up in discussions, have a hashtag that you ask everybody to use and then pull up that hashtag. Just take a screenshot and stick it in the newsletter. Okay. Okay. This is good. Yeah. I also like the idea of, of, of giving those award winners an opportunity to show their product in, in so we could not only tell the world that we like this product and but we could let them give them a chance to demonstrate it if they wanted yeah that's a good idea okay well i think we're getting close to the end of the time of our scheduled meeting. Uh, is there anything else that anybody would like to discuss? Yeah, if I've missed anything, yeah, please let me know here and we, we, can, we can raise that point. In the meantime, I have lots of things to prepare for a, a, a message to the entire working group. Um, so if y'all could, oh, recommended new publications, Art, huh? Would that be for the newsletter for social media or, but yeah, in general, definitely. I think you could do it for both. Okay. This is cool. All yeah, right. You know, somebody sees a new paper that comes out that they think, you know, is really great and other people should see. Yeah. 
Oh, good idea. Definitely. Thank you. Social media or, you know, a sort of, I don't know, whenever you put the newsletter out, a semi-annual list or something. Yeah. Okay, good. Mm, all right. Okay, then, well, um, if, if nobody else has anything they'd like to add, uh, how about we, does, does anybody move that we adjourn? I think that's the Roberts Rules of Order way to, to close our meeting. Or if not, we could keep talking. <laughs> Drake moves to adjourn. Uh, oh, and my, Miles seconds. All right. Uh, all in favor type. Yes. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'd, I'd say that's a, a motion in favor. All right, thanks so much, y'all. I appreciate your joining us. Uh, those of you who are not members, please consider. We'd, we'd love to get you involved in all this. And it, it's, it's cheap. And uh, thanks again. I, I think we'll close it down now. Thanks so much, everybody. I will stay online until everybody else is off and just in case anybody has something they want to say. So it looks like M. Cameron and Mark Nelson and Alex, you're all still on. So would you like to discuss anything? I'm all set, Jeff. I, I'm just hanging out to uh, get the, the last of the chat recorded here. Good idea. Yeah. Thank you for saving that too. Yeah. No problem. Boy. For uh, moderating. <laughs> oh, no, you can't imagine how grateful I am that you were here, Alex. Thanks so much. I, I do appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Sorry, I didn't couldn't make it on time. My other meeting <laughs> went way over, but well, I, I I I started the meeting by thanking you for the years that you've given us, and you definitely deserve it. Uh, for for years, you've been volunteering. Just uh, even one of the few who did. So, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. And thank you. I know you've also been volunteering for many years, <laughs> keeping the group going. And we uh, really appreciate it. So I hope we get a good year this year. Yeah, it sounds like we've got some some new folks that are interested. And I think if we can get some social media up and running, um, that would really probably help boost our profile amongst members. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Um, Mark, is there anything you wanted to say? Looks like he's he's connected, but I th I think I think this is a good time to go ahead and We're probably good. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll talk with you later, Alex. Sounds good. Take care, Jeff. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.